the work. This video is just one little tiny window into the past two months of winter boat work here in Maine. We've been focused on getting everything ready for the big day when we get to install all the batteries and motors. Who oh, am I fooling? It'll probably take more than one day. Here is the Saturday morning we spent sorting batteries. After measuring and recording the capacity of each cell, we pulled them all out of storage and resorted them into balanced groups. Because these are used batteries from Nissan Leafs, the capacity of each one is a little different. We wanted to make sure that each of the groups in series, seen here as piles up against the wall, can hold as close as possible to the same amount of energy as each other, so that they finish charging or discharging at the same time. The overall capacity of the system is limited by whichever group fills or empties first. Just stacking them randomly gave us a good chance of getting pretty unlucky. Worst case, it could have cut the performance by 40 to 50%. We opted for slow, methodical testing and a morning bending over boxes with a spreadsheet in one hand. This is the really messy part of this project, both literally, as you'll see soon, and because we're figuring it out as we go and often don't have a good estimate of how long things will take. This middle part of winter tends to feel endless like that too. Shoveling, scraping windshields, mittens, hats, jackets, boots. When will it snow again? The batteries are sorted, packed away, and ready for installation day. Let's see where we left Linnea. Hi, I'm Kelsey. And I'm Joshua. And this is Linnea, on land, still frozen. This winter, we took the diesel engines out, and we're getting ready to put the electric motors in. In this video, we'll show you the guts of the transformation. Yeah, after the diesel engines came out, we were left with quite a mess. Uh, and a lot of components that could be just permanently pulled out. There were two diesel filters, a, a raw water strainer and the raw water through hole. There were the engine mounts that could come out, and a big hank of the wiring that we didn't need anymore. There was a bracket for the starter battery that was going to be in the way of the, where the new batteries go, and that needed to get cut out. And then there was the exhaust hose and the coolant fixtures for the diesel engines. There's a puddle of coolant, oil absorbent pads, and a nasty sponge. It all had to go. Time to get to work cutting and grinding. I can't tell who I am, probably. <laughs> grinding the old epoxy paint and fiberglass leaves a really insidious sort of sticky dust on everything. So we had to cover up things that we didn't want to get too dusty, like the nav station. I made 3D CAD of our project so that we could see how the different components fit and make drawings to work from. We started by taking measurements of the hull, but drawing boats in SolidWorks is definitely above my skill level. Then we took some measurements of the shaft and tried to sketch it into the hull as best we could. And then I made a drawing of the Ocean Volt AXC motor based on the datasheet specs. Next I knew that we were going to need to add some blocks uh, to the inside of the hull in order to support the batteries, so I sketched those in place. And then I added in the heat exchanger that will take the place of an existing through hull. It's a bronze plate that goes on the underside of the hull and gets plumbed to the motors for cooling. Next I drew in the structural pieces that will support the batteries. And then finally I placed the batteries themselves. That's 56 Nissan Leaf batteries all stacked in and squeezed together against the bulkhead just forward of the motor. So there's the plan, now we can start mixing the resin. When it's January in Maine and you want to do fiberglass work, you do it on whatever day you can find that's above freezing. process the pond finally froze over and we got a couple days of really crusty skating in. and then it snowed and the skating was all over. So Joshua is gluing foam together to make the blocks to hold up the battery supports. He started by cutting three slices of one inch structural foam because that's how thick it comes and laminating them with epoxy. Back 
back at the table saw, we cut them into shape and shaved off space for a piece of aluminum that we can drill and tap to bolt on the battery rack. We waited for another warmish day to bond it to the hull. Then came a coating of fiberglass. Yeah, well, it got hard. Feels good. Nice. With the battery supports in place, we turned our attention to how the motors would fit in the hulls. Even though we had the CAD drawings and a cardboard mock-up of the motors, we wouldn't know for sure until they actually arrived. We're going to fit the motors and see how big this project is really going to be. <laughs> So this is just a safety line. I wasn't thinking that we would actually pull the engine up, but I'll just lift the motor up myself and You'll use this it. as a safety. I can belay it. You can belay it. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Okay, that's good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but there are... Nope. Papa, I'm so sorry, but there's okay, no now a little bit more. Two boxes. Okay, now less. The same thing. Here, I'm going to guess how many millimeters. About 20. Yeah, that's good. So 18 millimeters long. Bad scene here. I, I think it's not even going to be close. I don't know, does she have the key? She does. Uh, then yeah. So the challenge here is that this doesn't fit down in the hole that the old Yanmars fit into. So we either need to figure out how to get the shaft higher, or something, or just hog out all the fiberglass so that this thing can drop down. That's about as bad as I feared. This is the mess I made in order to get the engine, the motor to fit in this hole. Um, so I had to remove most of these bunks here on both sides and this log that um, shuttles bilge water um, underneath the motor compartment here. Well, there it is down in the hole, more or less lined up with the shaft where it belongs. The only challenge is it's pretty much tight to the hull. I've, I've chipped out all of the engine bunks uh, down to where I was starting to grind into the actual hull itself, and I uh, don't think I care to go much further than that. So, it seems like maybe there's still a millimeter to spare, um, but that doesn't give us a lot of opportunities for adjustability if we need to do shaft alignment down any further than this, so. So here I have glassed over the open wounds, including this uh, log that shuttles water underneath the motor here. The last piece of fiberglass work we need to do on the port side here is to replace that through hole with this 
um, cooling plate. It's a, a heat exchanger for the for the motors. All right. Here's that through hole on the outside of the hull. So, uh, got it. All right, so the holes where the through holes were are one and three sixteenths, but the new uh, heat exchanger shaft is 50 millimeters. So I'm gonna have to drill this out a little bit. And in order to get the hole saw to work, I think what I'm gonna do I made some plugs uh, to bung up the, the end of the hole here. Let's see if I can get this in good. So now I have something to center this larger uh, two inch hole saw. Well, there's nothing more nerve wracking than drilling a hole in the bottom of your boat, even if there's already a hole in that same spot. Here goes. All right, we're gonna do the same thing from the inside here. Let's see. As I learned on the outside, this is a two-handed operation, so no video. Ooh, look at that. There's a big hole. All right, let's see here. I still need to bed this with 5200, which I can't do today, but we can get a look at what this is gonna be like. Seems like I'm gonna end up grinding that down a bit, but it's gonna be an awesome little remora or chitin or something, just glued on the bottom here. I'll keep it in place now so that the, keep the weather out. All right. Oh man. <laughs> I just want to thank you for all the hours and the hours you spent down in the bilge wearing that respirator. Yeah, thanks. It's starting to look a lot different down there. It smell a lot different too. Mmm, we traded that uh, that diesel <laughs> stink for epoxy and paint stink, but that'll, that'll go. That'll go. Somehow we didn't get much footage of the actual paint thing, but that took yeah. a lot of time. So here's the, the before and after pictures. Yeah, it's nice to step back and see the results of chipping away at this day after day. It looks so clean and uncluttered. I can see the new battery supports. So, what comes next? Uh, well, like the entire starboard side. <laughs> but port side just needs one more coat of paint and then we can start building in the battery structure and aluminum pieces. After that, there's installing the motors, inverters, Wiring everything together, mounting the controls at the helm. It's not over yet. And then a whole bunch of cleaning up. And these guys are wrangled. <laughs>